The Oyster Perpetual Dayjust is the epitome of the classic Rolex watch. With its timeless aesthetics, functions, and rich history, the Datejust is a watchmaking icon. And I'm the proud owner of this beauty right here, Rolex Datejust 36, reference 126233. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over my six month review, answer a few questions, and show some beautiful footage of the watch. So real quick, my name is Jason, you're watching this themed image. I like nice things and I like to talk about it. If you're interested in knowing about how I was able to actually purchase this watch, you can click the video up here. It's gonna take you through the entire journey of how I was able to acquire the watch, how much I paid for the watch, and just an overview of me picking up the watch from Atlanta. So before we get into the questions, let me just briefly do a quick overview of the specs of the watch. This is reference 126233. This has a 36 millimeter case, and it does come on this beautiful gold motif dial. The Jubilee bracelet with a fluted bezel does have a sapphire crystal with the Cyclops lens over the date. This watch does have a screw down twin lock winding crown and it is mechanical with a self winding movement and has a water resistance of 100 meters or 300 feet. Inside of the watch, it has the 3235 caliber Rolex movement and a power reserve of approximately 70 hours. Now that we've got the specs out of the way, let me answer a few questions. So question number one is, how is the date just holding up? So when I first got this watch, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was very nervous, okay? I mean, this is a very beautiful watch. It has precious metal, has the gold on it, but I mean, it's a prestigious Rolex watch. So I was very, you know, apprehensive and nervous to wear it in the beginning. Although it does have the Jubilee bracelet, when you first purchase it, something that you should know is that the bracelet is actually very stiff and rigid, so you kind of have to break it in a little bit. I will say that at the Rolex AD, she was able to fit it on my wrist. Me personally, I like to wear the watch fitted. I don't like for it to move, so I enjoy that it's very, you know, snug on my wrist. It's been keeping time well. It's been it's just been a joy to wear. It's it's a beautiful watch and I haven't been like super rough with my watch. One thing that I love most about Rolex is that they design their watches to take a beating, okay? Like they put them through rigorous tests. So to answer the question in short, the watch is holding up well. Um, I've had no issues with it and yeah, I love it. Is this watch easy to you? One of the things that I dealt with initially outside of you know, just being comfortable with the Jubilee bracelet was actually learning how to set the date and set the time of this watch. And you're probably like, well, is it really that difficult? No, this is a quick set watch, so it doesn't take a lot to do it. It's just that you have to make sure you pull the crown out to the specific notch. And one of the things that I was struggling with initially was actually being able to screw the crown down tightly. Also, I was struggling with the actual clasp of the watch. Clasping and unclasping the watch every day has made it a lot easier. It's not loose, I don't, want, I don't want to use the term loose, but it has, I guess I've just learned how to properly do it. I wish that it had the, the uh, folding part of the clasp. So if you look at it, and I'll show it on the B-roll, this top part here looks as though it folds over, but actually it's just one piece. So it's not like some of the sport models where it has like the, the double interlocking system. Um, I can't think of the actual term right now, but I'll look it up and put it on the screen. But I wish it had that. And the reason why is because if this gets like caught on something, it will come undone. Or if you don't clasp it down all the way, it will come undone. But the beauty of it is that this watch doesn't just fall off because it is a complete, it makes a complete loop. And so even if the clasp comes undone, it won't fall off your wrist, which is great. So it'll be very difficult for someone to try to pull this watch off of your wrist if it ever came to that. Is the Rolex Day just a watch that can be worn every day? In my personal opinion, I'm gonna say yes. I've had this watch since June and I pretty much wear it all the time. There are times where I'll put on one of my other watches, but this watch gets worn the most right now. Uh, I love it. I love it to death. I'll be honest with you, like I said, I was very nervous at first to, to wear this watch simply because, I mean, it does have gold in it and it's a precious metal watch and it's very noticeable. You see this watch, you know what it is. It's very recognizable, let me say that. And so I was nervous at first to wear it, but now I, I wear it every day. If you saw my last video, and I'll link it here, 
I have a Seiko that looks very similar. And so most people that have known that I've had the Seiko, they really don't know the difference because they look so similar. But I, I do enjoy wearing this watch every day. I will say that this watch can be worn probably from streetwear all the way to about business formal. I really wouldn't wear this watch with a tuxedo, but again, if you're gonna pay $8,000, $12,000, $25,000, $50,000 for a watch, even if it's a sport watch, you pretty much can do what you want with it. So it's really up to the wearer's discretion. But I would say if you have one or you're thinking about buying one, wear it every day, wear it as much as you can. Enjoy it and fall in love with it because you spent your hard earned money on it, you should wear it every day. Is this watch worth the hype and price? I am going to say yes. And the reason why, as I said at the beginning of the video, Rolex is a very prestigious and iconic brand. You're paying for the Rolex name, but you're also paying for the materials. Like if you actually go on the Rolex website and read about the materials that they use, the movements, you'll see that they put a lot of time, energy, and effort into crafting these beautiful timepieces. So I think paying a premium price for something that is rare, that is exclusive, is worth it. This is something that I can have for the rest of my life. When I have children, I could pass it down to my son or daughter. They can pass it down to their children. This is something that if I really got into a tough spot, I could offload it and have almost instantly $20,000 if I actually absolutely just was in a very tough spot. One thing that I can say is that most people who aren't into horology at all, they see this as being very pretentious or elitist or things like that. I don't see it that way. I'm not even deep into horology, but I can appreciate the aesthetics and prestige Rolex has had, you know, for well over 100 years now. Also, one of the things that I'll say that I think makes it even more worth it is that most of the time you have to wait an extended period of time for these watches. So, is it worth the hype, the wait, the price? Yes. So, if you're if you're on the fence about buying one, I'll say do it. Maybe go to a local AD, see if they have any watches on display, try one on. And that's really what happened to me. I tried on one, I fell in love with the Datejust. It wasn't this one specifically, but when I tried on the Datejust, I knew that it was right for me. So what's next for my collection? I briefly talked about this in the last video and I'll, I'll talk about Rolex first and then other brands. As far as Rolex is concerned, I only maybe want maybe three or four more watches from Rolex. I know you're probably thinking, well, that's a lot. Rolex has an extensive line of watches. If you've ever went to an AD and picked up one of their Rolex books, I mean, the book is this thick. I have one out, I'll show you the book, but Rolex has a variety of models. I'm not looking to have one of each, but I like to have a Rolex Cellini, a Rolex GMT Master II, and possibly a Submariner. But that's really it for my collection as far as Rolex is concerned. But there are other brands that I want to get into. I would like another Cartier, maybe another Tank in white gold, or possibly a Santos in, in the white gold as well. Just because I have a gold one, I'd like something else. Uh, let's see what else would I want in my collection. Um, Patek Philippe, I said that as well, the Collar Travel. But when I asked the question, people were giving me a lot of great watches to check out. And something that I, I had forgot about was the um, ALS 1815. That watch is very beautiful and I'll post a picture of it, but I'm like, I might would actually choose that over the Calatrava to be honest. That watch is absolutely beautiful and I would love to have that in my collection. I like things that are very, you know, again, timeless and beautiful. My aesthetic is very casual to business casual. To own a GMT or a Submariner for those super casual days, those streetwear days, I love to have one in my collection. And they're beautiful watches as well. Final thoughts for you on this watch. If you're thinking about getting a Rolex, I would say go with a date just because again, the 36 is perfect. If you have a bigger wrist, I say go for a 41, but the date just is a classic watch. It's gonna fit practically every aesthetic that a man or woman can have. And it's just a classic timeless watch. You can't go wrong with owning a date just. I will say if you are fortunate enough to purchase one, wear your watch, wear it, enjoy it. You know, if you look at the class when I watch, I wear this every day and I sit at the desk. So I have scratches on my watch already. Sapphire Chris has been holding up well. 
the the cyclops over the day that's been holding up well but this watch is meant to be worn and used so it does have a few scratches on it but that's okay boom of the watch at night is great again i'm not having any issues but the watch is still very new it's still a it's still in its infantile stage so this watch is doing well also one of the things i will say that you don't hear about a lot is that once you purchase it get your watch insured it will come with all the paperwork that you need you can take pictures but you can go through your car insurance company or whoever you have your home insurance with but get individual insurance for your watch that way if something happens to it you lose it they will cover at, at a bare bones minimum the price of the watch. That is something very important that I would tell you to do. That's one of the first things that I did. I wore it around a little bit when I walked out of the store and I literally took it off and put it in the box because I was very nervous and didn't want anything to happen to it. I didn't want to scratch it, scuff it until I got it insured. So even if you're wearing it every day, be sure maybe once or twice a week to just take it and wind it. Let the date set, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You're not gonna break the watch. Again, these watches are put through rigorous tests to ensure that they're going to last. And it comes with a five-year warranty. So if you if something does happen when you get your watch, it is covered for five years. But that's what your warranty card is for. And last but not least, I've said it and I'm gonna say it again, wear and enjoy your watch. If you bought it, don't be afraid. Don't put it in a box somewhere because honestly, that's unfair. I feel like it's unfair to yourself, but it's also unfair to someone who really wants the watch and you got it before them and you're putting it in a safety deposit box. What's the point? If you're not going to wear it, don't buy it because you're holding up somebody else in the line. So if, you, if you're if you fortunate enough to get that call, it doesn't matter if it's a Datejust, a Submariner, a GMT, a Cellini, Air King. It does not matter. If you're fortunate enough to get the call, wear the watch and enjoy it. But you watch guys out there, tell me in the comments below, how do you take care of your watch? Um, I usually just wipe it down, you know, with like a, a cloth or like a, a soft shirt or something like that. But tell me how you actually care for your watch. I love to know in the comments below. And also tell me your girl watch for you guys new here. I want to know if money was not an option for you, what type of watch would you purchase? I hope you found value in this video and if you did be sure to smash that subscribe button also be sure to follow me on instagram i post cool content on there again i hope you enjoyed this video and as always i catch you in the next video peace